The Lord be with you. Thank you for joining me today for the whole counsel of God here at Christ Our Savior Lutheran Church in Holland, Michigan on this January the 11th. Today we hear Matthew, the 11th chapter. Let's hear God's word together and pray. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Lord have mercy, Christ have mercy, Lord have mercy. Speak, Lord, for your servants here. Please show me now your ways that I may gain Christ and be found in him, not having a righteousness of my own that comes from the law, but that which comes through faith in Christ. Your word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. Give me life, O Lord, according to your word, and I shall declare your greatness. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Matthew, the 11th chapter, verses 1 through 19, entitled, Messengers from John the Baptist. When Jesus had finished instructing his 12 disciples, he went on from there to teach and preach in their cities. Now when John heard in prison about the deeds of the Christ, he sent word by his disciples and said to him, Are you the one who is to come, or shall we look for another? And Jesus answered them, Go and tell John what you hear and see. The blind receive their sight, and the lame walk. Lepers are cleansed, and the deaf hear and the dead are raised up, and the poor have good news preached to them. And blessed is the one who is not offended by me. As they went away, Jesus began to speak to the crowds concerning John. What did you go out into the wilderness to see? A reed shaken by the wind? What then did you go out to see? A man dressed in soft clothing? Behold, those who wear soft clothing are in king's houses. What then did you go out to see? A prophet? Yes, I tell you, and more than a prophet. This is he of whom it is written, Behold, I send my messengers before your face. You will prepare, who will prepare your way before you? Truly I say to you, among those born of women, there are risen no one greater than John the Baptist. Yet the one who is least in the kingdom of heaven is greater than he. For from the days of John the Baptist until now, the kingdom of heaven has suffered violence, and the violent take it by force. For all the prophets and the law prophesied until John. And if you are willing to accept it, he is Elijah, who is to come. He who has ears to hear, let him hear. But to what shall I compare this generation? It is like children sitting in the marketplaces and calling to their playmates. We played the flute for you, and you did not dance. We sang a dirge, and you did not mourn. For John came neither eating nor drinking, and they say, He has a demon. The Son of Man came eating and drinking, and they say, Look at him, a glutton and a drunkard, a friend of tax collectors and sinners. Yet wisdom is justified by her deeds. So far the word of the Lord. People commonly experience disappointment because of false or unfilled expectations. We hope God will act in a certain way, but he does not. We then wonder why. To guard against false expectations, focus on Jesus. Focus on Jesus and what he has said and done. For he is the fulfillment of all of our hopes. All the promise of God find their yes in him. 2 Corinthians 1.20 We pray. O oh Lord Jesus, when I struggle with doubts and unfulfilled hopes, remind me of your words and works that assure me of your saving love. In your name I pray. Amen. We continue in chapter 11, verses 20 through 24, entitled, Woe to Unrepentant Cities. Then he began to denounce the cities where most of his mighty works had been done because they did not repent. Woe to you, Chorazin! Woe to you, Bethsaida! For if the mighty works done in you had been done in Tyre and Sidon, they would have repented long ago in sackcloth and ashes. But I tell you, it will be more bearable on the day of judgment for Tyre and Sidon than for you. And you, Capernaum, will you be exalted to heaven? You will be brought down to Hades, for if the mighty works done in you had been done in Sodom, it would have remained until this day. But I tell you that it will be more tolerable on the day of judgment for the land of Sodom than for you. So far the word. 
Jesus is deeply grieved that some who have had the greatest opportunity, some who have had the greatest opportunity to hear the gospel stubbornly refuse to repent and believe. His warning to the Galilean cities is one for us to take heart as well. Many of us have been blessed to drink often of the water of life. We must respond eagerly and sincerely. Day by day, Jesus patiently invites us to repent of our sins and to hear his words of forgiveness. We pray, turn my heart daily, O Holy Spirit, to confess my sins and receive the full and free forgiveness earned by Jesus. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. We continue now in chapter 11, verses 25 through 30, entitled, Come to me, and I will give you rest. At the time, Jesus declared, I thank you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, that you have hidden these things from the wise and understanding and revealed them to little children. Yes, Father, for such was your gracious will. All things have been handed over to me by my Father, and no one knows the Son except the Father, and no one knows the Father except the Son and anyone to whom the Son chooses to reveal him. Come to me, all who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and lowly in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. So far the word. A thing hidden from the wise and understanding is God's gracious plan of salvation. The message that both Jesus and John the Baptist proclaimed. Jesus' Jesus's contemporaries, by and large, rejected him, preferring to live under the heavy yoke of the law as the way to salvation. Jesus invites us to receive the yoke of the gospel, which guarantees true rest, we pray. O oh, dearest Jesus, I praise you that when I am yoked to you, no burden is too heavy. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. We pray for us calendar for this 11th day of the month. That the Lord would help us raise our children and young people in the faith, always pointing, to, pointing them to the hope and salvation found only in Christ Jesus. In his name we pray. Amen. The prayer of the church. O merciful Father, you have wounded your own son to bring us the eternal healing of your love. Bless the sick and those who suffer, those wounded in body or mind, and those dying, and all those we now name to you, Art and Rick, Clifford and Helen, Marianne, Karen, Jane, Marilyn, Chris, Colleen, and all those we now name to you in our hearts. In your own time, grant to them healing according to your will, and sustain them into the day of the resurrection of the body. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. All these things, O Lord, and whatever else you know that we need, we pray you to grant us for the sake of the mercies and by the merits of our Savior, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen.